in bell work. This right here is setting us up for the most important lesson left of the year. And we already kind of know what's going on. But a lot of what's going on right here, we are going to do uh, today. We're going to learn a new lesson over. Okay, we are solving the initial value problem. So the initial value problem, remember, that's a fancy way of saying get Y by itself. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it a Y equals problem. And we don't want it to have C in it. We want it to have just numbers. Okay, so we're given a differential equation. Remember, a differential equation is just a fancy term for this thing right here because it says the derivative equals that. If I want to make it Y equals, the first thing I got to do is what? Multiply by dx. I want to get all of the x's on the same side. So I get dy equals e to the 3x plus 2 over 1 minus x. And technically, all of that is multiplied by dx. That's step one. Step two, I don't want it to say dy. I want it to be y equals. How can I make dy become just y equals? Integrate. We are going to integrate both sides. The left side's easy. What uh, is the antiderivative of the derivative of y? It's just y. It's like saying y prime. What's y prime become? Oh, it becomes y. Cool, that's easy. This next part is a little bit more challenging. If you were good at mental u sub, then these were easy. If you weren't good at mental u sub, then this is a little bit tough. E to the 3x. Technically, you could make that a u substitution problem. Okay, or we could just use our brain. What would the u be if I made this a u sub problem? 3x. What is the antiderivative of e? E. The antiderivative of e is e. So the antiderivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x. But by mental u sub, since this right here would be my u, what else do I need to do with this new antiderivative? Multiply or divide by the derivative of my u. Since my u would be 3x, it would be 3, so then I divide by 3. That's where I'm getting the one-third from. That is mental use of. It's something we've done a little bit of. I know you're not perfect, but that's a good thing to do. The next one, are there any constants here? 2 is a constant, and then it's 2 times 1 over 1 minus x. That is something you need to recognize. If you have a function to the first power on bottom and nothing on top, what is the antiderivative of that going to be? That is natural log 2. Natural log, absolute value. That 2 is a constant. We would rewrite the baby. 1 minus x. What else do I need here? A negative sign. Good, Luke. Why? Luke, why do I need a negative sign? Because of this 1 minus x. If we were to do u substitution with this problem, we would make the u 1 minus x. And the derivative of that is negative 1. So when he divides by the derivative, it's going to include a negative sign out in front of that thing. So it gets me that guy right there. What else do I need with this problem if I just took the antiderivative and I didn't have any bounds? Plus C. That is the antiderivative. But here we are solving the initial value problem, which what that means is we're going to take the antiderivative and then plug in these two numbers. We've got 0 and 1. We're going to take those two numbers and plug them in. So I take 1, I plug it in for x, and I take, I'm sorry, I take 0, I plug it in for x, I take 1, I plug it in for y. So 1 equals 1 third e to the 3 times 0 minus 2, natural log, absolute value of 1 minus 0 plus c. These are math facts you need to know. What is 3 times 0 going to get me? 0. zero. What is e to the 0 power? One. Anything to the 0 power is 1. That is 1 times 1 third. So this guy right here is 1 third. You need to be able to do that math. In here, I'm taking 1 minus 0, so it's just 1. What is the natural log of 1? That is a math fact you need to know. you got to be able to do that to be able to pass what we're doing today. Natural log of 1 is going to get me 0. That is a math fact you need to know. You have to know that the natural log of 1 is 0. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble today. Okay, plus C. Cool, so that's zero. We subtract one third. One minus one third gets me two thirds. That's what C is. Once I figure out what C is, then all I got to do is plug it back in. My answer to this question is Y equals one third e to the three X minus two natural log absolute value one minus X 
plus two thirds. There's a lot going on there, but that's very important for what we're doing today. Again, the most important day we have left. All right, here we go. Given the differential equation. Okay, remember, differential equation is just a fancy thing for saying dy dx equals something. The dy dx equals something. We're going to do a lot of this. You might be asked one of the following things. The first thing they might do is what we did in bell work. Solve the initial value problem. What did that mean we were doing? Y, it's like y equals, right? That we just want it to become y equals, so we got to find the antiderivative. Or they might say, find y equals f of x. They're saying find y, which means get y by itself. Do the antiderivative, get y. Or they might say, find the particular solution, which means get y by itself. Find the antiderivative, figure out what c is, same thing. Or they might say, solve the differential equation, which means get y by itself. Okay, figure antiderivative. They all mean the same thing. They can ask that question in a lot of different ways, but all of them mean the same thing. You are taking a dy dx and making it just y. That's what we're doing today, okay? We'll do this for multiple days here, so you don't have to be an expert by the time we get done today, but you need to continue to progress to become really good at this. Solve the differential equation by separating the variables. So they like gave us even something extra. Not only are we solving the differential equation, which means get y by itself, but they're telling you the method to do that, which is separating the variables. All right, that's the lesson we're learning today. So we look at this thing. We got dy over dx equals that guy right there. Solving the differential equation means what? Get y by itself. We want it to be just y. Right now, does it just say y? No, nah, there's a lot of stuff. I got to change it. So this is like implicit. Okay, remember when we learned implicit differentiation before, like we had this problem, you don't have to write this down. And we had to take the derivative of it just like this. And we took the derivative, we got 6y, and then you had to include dy dx. It had a little bit different rules when there was y in the problem. Same thing here, but we're doing antiderivatives. So the first thing we need to do is just like before, is I need to get all of the y's on one side and all of the x's on the other. How can, what do I need to do to get rid of this dx? Multiply both sides by dx. Boom, goes away. And to get rid of that y squared over here, I divide by it or, yeah, however you want to say it. We're dividing by y squared, okay? I don't like putting y squared on bottom if I can avoid it, so that's like y to the negative 2, right? If I divided by y squared on both sides, it would be like y to the negative 2 power. It just makes everything a little bit cleaner. 4x cubed dx. This is going to be a free response question on your AP exam. If you just do that, you scored one point. If you separate the variables correctly, you score a point. Multiply and multi divide. That was it. Okay, that was step one. Step two is we want to make this become just y. And right now it says dy. How do I get rid of that dy? What is the opposite of the derivative of y? Antiderivative. We're going to integrate both sides. So first thing we did is we separated. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate. Cool. Y to the negative 2, find the antiderivative of that. So, Evan, what's my new exponent going to be? Negative one. negative 1. And what else do I got to do? Put a, Put a negative in front. He added 1 to his exponent and then divided by his new exponent. Boom, done, on the left side. On the right side, it's 4x cubed. Caden, uh, what's the antiderivative, or what's my new exponent going to be? Four. X to the 4th, and what's my new leading coefficient going to be? One, because he's taking, he added one to his exponent to get four, divided by four, I got him one. Cool. I just took an antiderivative without bounds. So what else do I need to put with this problem? Plus C. And you might think, well, why didn't we put plus C on the Y side? Well, think about it. If I had a plus C over here, that's just a constant. If I'm adding a constant to both sides, I'll put them on the same side and just say one constant. If you had two on one side and three on the other, we can move it over and make a same constant. Don't worry about that too much. Just know we only have to put the plus C on the right side. Everybody good to that point? We have a plus C. We've got a point up here. Guess what we're going to do next? Plug in that point. This is my X. That's my Y. So we separated. We integrated. The next thing we're going to do is solve for C. So we are going to plug in my X value and my Y value. Go ahead and figure out what C is going to be here. We plug in here. We got one in and a two in. 
what is one to the negative one power going to do? What does that negative one do to something? It flips. It does a reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one? It's still one. That's negative one. Two to the fourth is 16 plus C. The next thing I got to do is subtract 16. And so I get negative 17 equals C. Everybody go to that point. So we separated. We integrated. We solved for C. What do you think I'm going to do next after I solve for C? Plug it in. We take this thing right here. We're going to plug it in. And so we're going to get negative Y to the negative 1 power equals X to the 4th minus 17. We separated. We integrated. We solved for C. But a whole, the whole thing with solving a differential equation is getting Y by itself. And right now, we don't have Y by itself. That's the last thing we're going to do. Okay, we're going to get Y by itself. So I got to get rid of everything over here on this Y side. Okay, Austin, what do you want to get rid of over there? The negative sign. How are you going to get rid of the negative sign? Divide by negative one, or in other words, just change all the signs. Boom, I got rid of the negative. And then this last part is a little bit weird, or at least it's a little bit different. It's Y to the negative one. I want to get Y by itself. So right now it's not by itself. What would I do to get rid of a negative one power? We could multiply or raise both sides to the negative one. What does y to the negative one mean? That is the same thing as one over y. So right now it's the reciprocal. I don't like one over y. What would I have to do to make it just y? We could multiply both sides by y. So let me show you that real quick. So if I did that, I'll just show you that math. Multiply both sides by y. Boom. And then what else would you have to do? You don't want to distribute because you want to get y by itself. You would divide by all this stuff right here. You would take that and divide by it. Okay. Here's what I think is the easiest way of thinking of it. If I want to make it, it's 1 over y right now, I just want to make it y. I just want to flip it. If I'm going to take the reciprocal on the left side, then I have to take the reciprocal of all of the right sides. So the easiest way to get rid of a negative one power is just take the reciprocal. But you have to do the whole thing at once. You're doing the reciprocal of the whole right side and the whole left side. And I'm done. That scores you five points on the AP exam. You get one point on the AP exam if you separate. You get one point on the AP, or actually you could get up to two points for integrating. If you integrate the left side correct, you get a point. Integrate the right side, you get a point. That's two. Separate, integrate. Then we solve for C. If you solve for C correctly, you've got a fourth point. And then the last thing you got to do is solve for Y. If you solve for Y correctly, that scores you five points on a free response question. You only need 40 to pass. We just got one eighth of the way there in about two minutes. Questions on that problem? Separate, integrate, solve for C, solve for Y. Let's do it again. Solve the differential equation by separating the variables. Start off without me by separating those variables. Go. Luke J, what'd you do? Multiply both sides by dx. Lovely. What else? Divided by y minus 2. Excellent. Yeah, you could make it y minus 2, the negative 1 as well. I'm going to leave it like that because I think it'll be a little bit easier for us to see. But yeah, you're good. Sometimes I do both. Good. We separated. That scored me a point. All I did was separate. I scored a point. Okay, once I have separated, okay, once I have separated, that's an S. It looks like an integral sign, but oh, that still looks like an integral sign. We separated. Once we've done that, what am I going to do next? I find the antiderivative. I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to find the antiderivative. This is a little bit weird for us sometimes. We are finding the antiderivative of dy over y minus 2. You've got y. It's on bottom. It's to the first power. And on top, there's no y's. What is the antiderivative if it's just a 1 on top and a y on bottom? That is natural log. Absolute value. You have to put those absolute value signs here. So it is the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 2. Do I need a negative sign out in front of everything? No, I don't. Because it was y was positive. I don't have to do like we did in Bellwork where we multiplied by a negative 1. Cool. That's the left side. On the right side, we're taking the antiderivative. Jesse, what's the antiderivative of the right side going to be? What's my new exponent going to be? Two. And so my new leading coefficient's one half. Good. 
and then minus x. What else do I need? Plus c. Boom. That's two more points. We separated, then we integrate. Can it? If it were 1 over 1 minus y, and I took the antiderivative of that, it'd be natural log of 1 minus y. But since the derivative of that would be a negative, that's when I would include a negative sign in front. Does that make sense? All right. So, good. We integrated. We separated. We integrated. Next thing we're going to do, once we separate and integrate, then we are going to plug in, solve for c. Let's do that. Okay. This one's a little bit weird, but it doesn't really get, it's not going to really affect us that much in the end. All right, plug in 2 for x and 4 for y. So the natural log of 4 minus 2, 1 half, 2 squared, minus 2, plus c. 4 minus 2, 2. 2 squared is 4, times a half is 2, and then it's 2 minus 2 plus c. What is c going to be? Natural log of 2. That's my C. Natural log of 2. I separated. I integrated. I solved for C. Once I solve for C, A and B, what am I going to do next? Yep. Plug it back into my equation, and I'm going to solve for Y. Right now, I already scored four points. Okay, if you're this last part is sometimes difficult, but if you already got to here, you got four out of the five points. So you're going to be very successful if you get just get to here. All right, and then it's just a matter of how good are your algebra skills. We did all the calculus. We did all the calculus once we got past that step. Once we got past the integrating, then it's just algebra. All right, there's my problem. We got to get y by itself. Let's do it. We're separating, integrating, solving for c. And now we are going to solve for y. What do I need to get rid of first? Natural log. What is the opposite of taking the natural log of something? It is e. It is raising both sides to a base of e. Okay, so the e and the ln over here on the left-hand side just cancel. All you're left with on the left-hand side is the absolute value of y minus 2. On the right-hand side, let me show this to you. You could just leave it like this. E to the one-half, x squared minus x plus natural log of 2. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to simplify it all. It's a free response question. But if they give you multiple choice, they might reduce it. Let me remind you of some math facts. x squared times x cubed. What would x squared times x cubed be equal to? x to the fifth, right? So if you did these two things... It is like taking 2 plus 3. It's like adding your exponents. If you add the exponents, you could separate it into two separate things. Everybody with me on that? So we're going to do the same thing with this guy. We have e to the 1 half x squared minus x. But then we're going to separate it times e to the natural log of 2. Since it was a plus sign up there, we're going to separate it into a times. If I do that, what's going to happen with this e and ln? They cancel, and it's just times 2. And so the easier way of writing this is 2e to the 1 half x squared minus x. All right, here's what you want to look at. If you have e and you have an exponent with like natural log of some number, just take that number and put it in front. All right, if that is confusing to you, it's something they will do with multiple choice. So since it was e and natural log of 2, make it times 2. All right, it's a math fact. You learned it in Algebra 2. You learned it in pre-calc. It's been a minute. Everybody good to that point? Almost there. I got to get y by itself. It's not by itself right now. What do I need to get rid of next to get y by itself? It's I got to get rid of absolute value. What does an absolute value do? If I gave you 2 and I took the absolute value of it, what would it give you? 2. If I took negative 2 and I took the absolute value of it, what would it get you? 2. So if I want to get rid of the absolute value, I got to do the opposite of just making it positive, which is not just making it negative, but making it both. The opposite of absolute value is throwing a plus or minus sign in front. All right. So over here on the left side, that's going to cancel. But over here on the right side, it is plus or minus. The opposite of plus of absolute value is plus or minus. I have one last thing to do. I've got to get y by itself, so what else do I need to do? Add 2. Add two. So it's going to be y is equal 
to 2 plus or minus 2 e to the 1 half x squared minus x. This is a long problem, but it's going to help you pass the AP exam. Without it, you won't. All right, we are not done because it's not plus or minus. We can't leave it as plus or minus. The good news is this last part helps you to check your work. All right, to decide whether it's plus or minus or not, we're going back to this point. We are going to plug in the x value of 2. So let's do that. If I plug in an x value of 2 right there, it's 2 squared, which would be 4. Times a half would be 2. And then 2 minus 2 would get me 0. What is e to the 0 power going to be? 1. So 2 times 1 would be 2. Right? Everybody with me? If I plug in 2, this whole guy right here is going to be 2. What do you want the math problem to say? Do you want to be 2 plus 2 or 2 minus 2 if in the end I want to be equal to 4? Plus. And so by plugging in that point, it's going to allow me to decide. It's just a matter of plugging in and thinking. What is going to make this a true statement? What is it going to make equal to 4? Well, if I do 2 plus 2, it'll make it equal to 4. All right? So here's what we had. Again, going through the steps. That was long, but now you're going to be good at it. Separate. Integrate it. We solve for C. We solve for Y. And then this last thing, we had to decide what it was. And so a couple years ago, I used to say decide, but then my students decided that we should go with O instead. And we made an acronym. We have separate. We have integrate. We have solve for C. We have solve for Y. We have options. S-I-C-Y-O. Sikio mode for this problem. That is what we do with these problems. This is a Sikio problem. Separate, integrate, solve for C, solve for Y options. If you remember that pattern, you're going to do well. Questions on what we did on that one? All right. We're solving the differential equation. So if we're solving the differential equation, Zachary, what are we going to do first? Separate it. If we're separating here, we are going to multiply by dt and divide by e to the y. So you could say divided by e to the y, but that gets kind of ugly. So instead, I'm going to say e to the negative y. Because just like if it's on bottom, it has a negative exponent. Okay, it takes a second. There's a couple tricks that we learned. That's a trick that we learned. Okay, t. And then over here on the right side, I got dt. That is step one. That scores you one point on the AP exam. Even if you can't do anything else, you can separate. Okay, even if you had it as divided by e to the y, you'd still get your points. There's my separate. Once I've separated, Maddie, what am I going to do next? Integrate it. Question? Don't don't put dx. They wouldn't count it all the way wrong. Hopefully you would find that. Okay. But because the problem is t, you want to be dt. Yeah. Okay, so we separated first. Step two is integrate. So I'm integrating here. E to the negative y. All right, it looks a little bit weird. E to the negative y. What is the antiderivative of e? E. but I got to put a negative one out in front because my exponent was negative Y. The derivative of that would be negative one. So I got to put a negative out in front. Okay. It's mental use up on the right side. It was T. Yeah. Nope. Just because it was negative. The derivative of Y would be negative one because we're just treating it with respect to Y. Good question. Slade, what's the der uh, antiderivative on the right side going to be? One half t squared. What else you got to put over there since we just took the antiderivative without bounds? Plus c. We separated. We integrated. Once we've integrated step three, what do I do next? Do it. Solve for c. You do not get one half. Go. We plug it in. We plugged in zero. What is e to the zero? What is anything to the zero power? One. But then I've got that negative sign. Okay. Make sure you're doing order of operations correctly. Over here, I got one, I square it, times a half, I get one half, plus C. Then I got to subtract the half over. I get negative three halves equals C. We separated, we integrated, we just solved for C. What do I need to do next? Plug it in. Go ahead, plug it in. So we get negative E. Oh, I plugged it. 
drew a weird arrow there. Sorry, negative e to the negative y equals one half t squared, and then it's going to be minus three halves. You're just going to need practice at this because all of them are a little bit different. You just got to get used to what's going on. Okay, we plugged in our c, so our last thing we got to do here, solve for y. What do I need to get rid of next here? Maisie, what do you want to get rid of? The negative. What am I going to do? Yep. Just flip all the signs. Negative one half T squared plus three halves. Boom. We just multiplied by a negative. Okay. Next thing. What do you want to get rid of next here, Max? The E. How do I get rid of an E? Natural log. To get rid of an E, the opposite of E is natural log of both sides. The natural log of both sides. Here, they're just going to cancel. It's not absolute value because we didn't integrate. When we integrate, it's absolute value. But here, we just took the natural log. So on the left side, it's negative y. On the right side, it is the natural log of negative one half t squared plus three halves. Is that ugly? Absolutely, it's ugly, but who cares? Last thing I got to do, I got to get y by itself. So what else do I need to do? Divide by negative one. Y equals negative natural log negative one half t squared plus three halves. All you got to do is just Put the negative in front. You don't, don't need to change all the other signs. It's just times negative one. Is there any plus or minus signs? No, we just separate, integrated, solve for C, solve for Y. There wasn't any options. Okay, so no sicky O, just sicky E, which is weird. When are you going to get options? Well, when you take do absolute values or if you took a square root. When you take a square root, it's going to be plus or minus as well. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Because we didn't do the antiderivative. When we find the antiderivative of something and we get natural log, that's when we have absolute values. If we don't take the antiderivative, then there wouldn't be uh, absolute values. Other questions? Let's do one more. Flip over to the back side. Okay, example four. Separate, integrate, solve for C, solve for Y options. See if you can do it without me. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can do the whole thing. We look at this problem, solve the differential equation. Great, that means get y by itself. Uh, what did we do first here? Uh, Rosalind, what did you do first? Good, multiply dx on both sides. And what else? Multiplied by y over. She separated y dy equals negative 3x dx. That is step one, separate. We just scored a point. Next thing we're going to do, what are we doing next here, Austin? integrate both sides don't be scared by this when it says y think of it like it just said x we're doing everything with respect to y that's what the dy means so austin if it just said x what would be the antiderivative x yeah one half x squared so it would be the antiderivative of y one half y squared that's all that is add one to his exponent divide by his new exponent on the right side we're taking the antiderivative of negative three x uh Ella, what's the antiderivative of negative 3x going to be? What's my new exponent? 2. And so my new leading coefficient? Negative 3 halves. Good. And I need a plus c. We separated. We integrated. If you integrate right, that can get you up to two more points. So we're up to three points, and we haven't done any of the hard stuff yet, hopefully. Next thing we're going to do is plug in 0 and negative 4. So my y is negative 4. Over here, I'm plugging in 0. That's zero, so who cares? Negative four squared is 16 times a half is eight. My C is eight. We separated, we integrated, we solved for C. Once we've done that, Taylor, then what? You plug it back in, you take that eight, you plug it in, so we get one half. Y squared equals negative three halves, X squared plus eight. She separated, integrated, solved for C, now we're solving for Y. So Taylor, what do you wanna do first? Multiply both sides by 2. If we multiply both sides by 2, that 1 half is going to go away. So then we get y squared. That 2 and that 2 are going to cancel when we distribute. So negative 3x squared and 2 times 8 would be 16. Lovely. We got to that point. I still need to get y by itself. What else do I need to do to get y by itself? Square root both sides. When I square root over here, they're going to cancel. I get the square root of negative 3x squared plus 16. What else do you need to include when you're solving and you take the square root of something? It is plus or minus. It is not both plus or minus. The last thing I have to do is pick an option. 
is it need to be positive or negative? And it shouldn't be too hard. We are taking zero and plugging it in, and we want to get negative four. So if I plug in zero, what do I want to be in the end? Do I want to be positive or negative? Negative, because the square root of 16 would be four, but I want to get negative four. And the only way I'm going to get negative four is if I choose an option of a negative square root in the end. It takes a while at first. The first few times we go through it, it's it's tough. Okay, I know it's tough, especially on a Friday. But once you get that feel for it, it should move a lot faster. That is scoring you at least five points on the AP exam and is going to help you pass and get out of college math. Questions? Questions?